Hello, 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 and welcome to Healing 101. Man, we are so excited. We are celebrating, but today is Friday and we still getting it in. This is Healing 101 and welcome. My name is Dr. Manifa Jones. I'm a transformational life coach. I'm an entrepreneur, a business owner, a health and wellness business distributor. I'm a previous college professor. I have ran outpatient mental health clinics for over 25 years, but I want you to know I'm a mother, a wife, a sister, and a daughter, and as of today, effective. I'm your friend. So welcome to be a part of the Love Tribe. Look, Healing 101 is where we come to be healed from our past trauma. Because I got to tell you, if they ask you what this girl been through, quite a bit. But that's okay. Because I have finally learned the true meaning. I finally learned the lessons. And now I know I'm not born to suffer. I'm, all the per pain, hurt, and suffering didn't happen to me, but it happened for me. So now I see it totally differently. My grief and my loss, my poor, bad, toxic relationships, all of the things I have dealt with that I labeled as bad has made me who I am today and I am bad. So get excited about that and I know you are too. So let's get right into it. Now we have been on a topic called reclaiming yourself. Why? Because I don't know of anything more important on this planet to reclaim other than you. I know you want to reclaim some money, some relationships, some things, some cars, some houses, but let me tell you, you reclaim yourself and you can reclaim anything else. That's the number one. Let me tell you, that's the first element of discipline, sacrifice, consistency is reclaiming yourself. As far as I'm concerned, nothing else matters because I learned that the healer must first heal thyself because you cannot pour from an empty cup. So let's get right into and get excited about reclaiming ourselves. I mean, let's just get excited about it. Okay. All right. So. We are talking about today how we have, if you go back and watch some of the replays, we said we no longer blame others. We no longer blame ourselves. We forgive others. We forgive ourselves. We are finally going to choose ourselves. Get excited. We are finally going to choose ourselves and stop saying yes to everyone else, which means no to us. We're going to say yes to ourselves, to everything, and think about it and say no to others for the first time in our life. We're going to make ourselves a priority. Get excited about that, right? So today I have four things to talk to you about. If you're new, we journal every day. Like, you got to steal away five minutes. You're worth it. You get 24 hours every day. 23 hours and 55 minutes. Do what you please. But five minutes... Look, you better give that to yourself because if you don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. So I definitely want you to journal. So before we go to bed, we write down 10 things that we are thankful for, right? And we just journal every day for five minutes to just kind of unload our brain of all of these race and thoughts that are always going through our head, right? But this is the thing. We're going to talk about four things today that I really want you to tap into. I really want you to take notes. Um, act like it's live. Put some comments in the box. Like, let's tap into this today because this is the real deal on reclaiming ourselves. So number one is happiness is not the absence of problems. It is the ability to deal with them. You better get excited about that. So many people say, I'll be happy when I get my dream house. I'll be happy when I get my dream car. I'll be happy when I'm in this perfect nurturing relationship. But let me tell you something. Happiness doesn't mean you have a bank full of money. It doesn't mean that because the banks, you, you see what's been going on with inflation and our economic situation. The banks could all shut down tomorrow. What you going to do then? So happiness is not depending upon a thing. Happiness is your state of mind and happiness is not the absence of problems. You could have everybody hating you, negative money in the bank, no job, no business, no house and no car, and you can be happy. Let me tell you something. When you love everything you have, you have everything that you need. Happiness is not the absence of problems, but the ability to deal with them. Do you know that there are so many problems that I used to look at and I used to cry about and I used to be sad about and I used to let it take my day, my week, my month and my year and my years and my decades. But now I find a way 
to find a solution and very, very, very quickly because I understand that my happiness is my job. It's an inside job. And I also understand that happiness is a choice. And let me tell you something. I choose me. I choose happiness. I don't choose to be around people that don't respect and love me. That makes me happy. I don't choose to focus on a negative bank account. I choose to prosper in my mind, in my health, and in my wealth and see my situation the way I want it to. That feels better. I could go ahead. Let me tell you something. If you make a million dollars a year, you make $33,333 a month. You make $19,230 a week. You make $2,739 a day. So say you got a million dollar mindset. Won't you go ahead and do your fantasy shopping every day for $2,739? Put it in a cart. Just don't check it out. Do you know what frequency and what vibration you're going to be in if you are spending $19,000 a week? And 83000 a month, you're going to start to see money differently. You're going to start not to operate out of lack. You're going to start not to think broke-minded because you're like, oh my God, it's almost midnight. I didn't spend my $20,000. I didn't spend my $83,000 because I am a millionaire. We have to think our way to where we want to be. We have to see what we want to be. Happiness is not the absence of problems, but the ability to deal with them. Find solutions. Eliminate stressors in your life. I don't care if it's a person, a place, or a thing. I don't care. Whatever is stressing you, eliminate it from your life. Let me tell you, if it costs your peace, let me tell you, baby, it costs too much. You've got to go. Okay. All right. So let's get right into number two. Number two is... Feeling sad after making a decision doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. So many people think, oh my goodness, I broke up with him and now I'm going through withdrawal. Now I miss him. Now I'm crying. Now I'm overeating. Now I'm drinking too much. I think I miss him. Sometimes we have to make adjustments in our life. And feeling bad after making a decision it doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. Please always weigh your pros and your cons. Please always consider what you've done and see if your decision has actually elevated you. See if your decision has actually empowered you to go to the next level. I want you to be very mindful that your emotions are there to guide you. They're not there to play tricks on you, okay? When you feel that thing in your gut that say, stay away from this person, pay attention, when you feel that excitement and that joy, when you are passionate about doing something, pay attention. That's connected to your money. That's connected to your joy. That's connected to your purpose and your destiny. Your emotions are there to teach you something. And if you're sad after making a decision, maybe you are so connected to it to the point where you still are not choosing yourself. Because if you break up with someone who's toxic or you stop going to a place that makes you physically feel ill or you stop doing something that no longer serves you, if you're feeling sad, then that means we're showing ourselves that we are operating on a low level vibration that is not taking us to the next level. And that's what we need to fix, not the decision. I keep telling you, if you don't go within, you will go without. Be a third party bystander and observe yourself. Don't try to just don't try to fix everybody. Don't try to tell everybody what to eat, what to do. You fix you. Gandhi says, I must be the change that I want to see in the world. You must be the change. You must be the change. You must be the change. In order for you to be the change, you're gonna have to focus 100 percent on yourself and not on others on choosing yourself. You better get excited about that. It's going to be a beautiful day when your feelings and your decisions match up. When you know, when you know you did the right thing. When you know you stood up to respect yourself, to value yourself, and to no longer allow others to belittle you. When you love yourself so much that you will separate yourself from that toxic person who has been in your life for a decade, but you finally choose you. You better get excited about that. Number three. 
you are not stressed because you are doing too much. So many people think, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm stressed because I'm doing too much. You are stressed because you are doing too little of what makes you feel alive. Look at your stress levels. You're never stressed when you are operating in your purpose and your destiny. I tell you, I love Healing 101. It just feels like it's so e seamless, easy to me. It feels like all of my experiences are finally for something. That all of the pain I've been through, the hurt, the suffering, the trauma, that now I can help others. I feel excited about all the tears I've cried. I, be, I feel excited about all the depression I've been through, all the anxiety I've been through, that I can save my sister and my brother. Some days, some weeks, some months, some years, and some decades. Because I am going to teach you how to look at the situation. I'm going to teach you the just the, the manifestation of miracles that you can find in the meaning in the true meaning and the ask, asking the right questions not why me but what is my lesson to learn so we don't have to go down this road anymore I'm so excited that I'm in my place called there that I'm walking out my purpose and my destiny and it feels so amazing and I'm so excited about it and so so many people say I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed I'm just so stressed I'm doing too much I'm taking care of family I'm taking care of children I'm taking care of job I'm taking my husband I'm taking care of the kids I'm taking uh, uh, like I'm going crazy no 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 you need to incorporate in that doing what you love because the time passes like seamlessly You'll be doing it for six hours and it'll feel like six minutes. When you are out of your place, it feels forever. Ask the people at work that's ready to go home. That last half an hour feels like 30 years. They cannot wait to, to clock out. I want you guys to know you have everything inside of you that you need to get to the next level. And you are not stressed. And if you feel like you are stressed and you, you observing yourself, you need to cut back on all of those things that are no longer serving you. And you need to increase the things that are serving you. What are you passionate about? Do that. For somebody, it could be baking a cake. For somebody, it could be teaching kids how to play golf. For somebody, it could be working in the senior citizen home. Everybody has their gift and their joy. Everybody has something. Let me tell you, if you're attracted to Healing 101, you're a healer. You wouldn't even be here. You wouldn't even care how to serve others. My question every day, my mantra is, how can I serve? How can I serve? Right? So I'm super excited to know that you're going to figure out how not to be overwhelmed ever again another day in your life by doing what you love rather than doing too much of what no longer serves you and then we just eliminate the stress now that's exciting get excited about that which is a great segue to lead us to number four i hope you're taking notes now the lesson you struggle with will repeat itself until you learn from it listen 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 ask a person who repeated their lesson about 14 times the lesson Listen, the lesson you struggle with will repeat until you learn. Can I tell you that the lesson is a teacher? There will be people that will manifest in your life and they won't be there forever. They'll be there just to teach you something. You're going to label it as wrong, as cheating, as backbiting, as hurting you, right? But they're a teacher. And the reason why they have to appear is because, see, that professor of hurt, pain, and struggle, of suffering, it's not going to let you go till you understand it. Let me tell you, the first 40 plus years of my life, I spent trying to please others, begging for their approval, begging for their love, begging for their validation. The first 40 plus years of my life, Lord Jesus. But I want you to know that I'm so super excited to let you know I've released that. I finally got the lesson. See, the people closest to you that don't do you right, they're just your teacher. I had a person, I won't even mention their relation to me, definitely a very, very close blood relation. When I tell you I thought I was going to die, I cried for eight months till I had no water left, tears left to cry. And then Spirit said, you understand now? 
You keep trying to please people. You keep trying to get approval from people. You keep wanting people to be proud of you that don't care nothing about you. They won't even check on you to make sure you're okay. Even though you funded the first 30 years of their life, they will never even check on you. You get the lesson now? The thing that you want, that you they're connected to, that they know you love so much, they'll keep it from you. Do, do you get the lesson now? And I'm like, yeah. I finally get the lesson. So, see, the lesson you struggle with, it's going to keep repeating. So just, you know, go through it. Don't run away from it. All you're going to do is repeat it over and over and over and over again. Ask me how I know. Lord Jesus. I want you to know that you're going to come out on top. Because, see, our highest level frequency is love. And our lowest is fear. We're just going to love. All those who hurt us, we're just going to love them. Our purpose and our destiny, we're going to love that. This journey that can be hurtful and painful, we're going to love that. Right? This healing journey that can be hurtful and painful, we're going to love that. This trauma that we have to endure, oh Lord, we're going to get the lesson from that. Because we know we were not born to suffer. But here's the thing. Get your lesson. Get out of there. Right? The more you run from it, the more you use addictions to cover it up. Once you finish all that ice cream, macaroni and cheese, and fried chicken, and pork chops, the problem's still going to be there. Remember, we're problem solvers. Remember number two? After you finish smoking, guess what? The problem's still going to be there, and you're going to have less money. After you finish the drugs, the problem's still going to be there. You're going to have less money. After you finish the toxic relationship, the problem's going to be there, and you're also going to have a broken heart. You, you get where I'm going with this? So we might as well face it because it's not going anywhere. But the beautiful thing is that start labeling the people that you feel are hurtful to you. Just label them as your teacher and say, thank you. I finally understand that I need to love myself. I finally understand that I must participate in a self-care ritual every single day because I know there are people outside the door that don't mind hurting me. So I better love on myself. I finally learned that I have to respect myself because I really want you to respect me. You show me that you have no respect for me, but I finally learned that I have to respect me, right? And I finally learned that I have to value me. Why would I want for you to value, love, respect me, cherish me, honor me when I don't even do that for myself? I don't even take five minutes to check in with myself, to ask myself every day, did I do my day or did my day do me? Did I serve today? Were my triggers pushed today? Were my buttons pushed today? Where do I need to elevate? Where do I need to grow? Because we understand that we have to grow through what we go through. And then we'll see it differently. And we won't hate on our mamas who we felt didn't love us. We won't hate on our ex-husbands who we felt abused us. We won't hate on our children who felt like love. I'm a grown man. I don't need you no more. And I don't need you in my child's life either. You, you won't hate on anybody. You'll just send love and light to everyone. And you'll live your life free. Can I tell you how much freedom and liberation comes from forgiving yourself and forgiving others? Man, that's exciting. So remember, if you don't have five minutes, you don't have a life. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to take two minutes and we're going to show you what to do. You can have music, no music. But please have a pen and a paper because you never know the messages that you will get for yourself. You are the true authority in your life. Everything you need is not inside of a book. It is not inside of a building. It is not inside of an organization. It is not inside of a business. It is not inside of a bank account. And it's definitely not inside of a relationship. If you don't go within, you will go without because everything you need is right here at home. This is my home, baby. Not my address. This is my address. And I need this place to be clean. I need this place to be pure. And I need this place to be joyful. So guess what? I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing that. While you over there hating on me, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in freedom and liberation and serving God. That's all I want to do. So if you would like to, put your hand over your heart. Close your eyes if you like to, because many of us have sight, but we don't have no vision. 
because we keep seeing bad things and we think bad things are all to come but good things are coming the best is yet to come baby you better get excited the best is yet to come all right so i may god continue to shine his face upon you may god be gracious to you and grant you peace repeat after me say this in your soul i forgive myself for believing that i could have done better when i didn't know how i forgive myself for believing that i could have done better when i didn't know how when i forgive others for the same i'm not holding no grudges over myself or others i operate in the now as far as i'm concerned right now and i'm good i don't know about yesterday and i really don't know about the future but right now and i'm good right now i'm great right now i am phenomenal amazing and awesome and i'm gonna stay right here and the next moment i'm gonna be good again expect good things to happen i am open and ready for things to start going my way i am open and ready for things to go my way because they've already started it's just that i spoke negativity over the miracles i thought they were temporary i thought they were instant i thought they were going away but now i expect the miracles now i receive the miracles now i look for them with anticipation and excitement i am inspired by the miracles that happen in my life every single day i expect a miracle and i am open and ready for things to go my way i am asking to receive a physical manifestation of that today i'm not waiting for 10 years i'm talking about i don't been through a lot show me show me my power show me the love inside of me show me that good things can happen to me i believe it show it to me I am open and ready to receive that message of what you want wants you. It is chasing you down. Think about it when you lay in your bed at night after you journal your gratitude and your thankfulness. I want you to think, man, it's already done. It's already done. I already have it. It's already mine. It's already done. It's already done. I already have it. It's already mine. And so it is, baby. You better get excited this Friday about walking and marching into this weekend with miracles manifested every single day. We're going to walk into the store. Who ready to bless me? We're going to see our girlfriend. What you got for me? A relative going to call. We're not going to think somebody died. We're going to be like, hey, you got something good for me? I expect a miracle. You better get excited about that. I will see you guys Monday and Monday through Friday live at 5.